Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of That Tenerife Podcast with me, Rick. Uh, Hope you've had a good week. Hope everything's been all right. Um, We're in a bit of a different place today. We're actually not in a pub. As you can look around, it's definitely not a pub. We're actually in uh, my house. And the reason why we're in my house is because we have the pleasure of speaking to Rebecca Bond. And she lives on our estate and she's been really busy at the moment. There's a lot of things going on that she's up to. And because she's been that busy, I said, look, we can't get into a pub to meet, which we normally like to do, because obviously we don't have a studio, with all, but I prefer the background noise. I thought, well, why not, instead of doing that, why don't we just meet at our house, me and my house, and um, we'll carry on the chat further from there. Before we do it, a couple of things. Thank you very much for listening to the previous podcasts. Uh, they're starting to do really, really well on YouTube, really enjoying it, if you like it. A couple of things. Don't forget to subscribe. That means a lot to me if you can do that. Uh, Click on the bell if you want the notifications as well because they're there. And um, click on the like button, put a thumbs up because it always helps as well for uh, for me further. But uh, without further ado, what I'd like to do is uh, bring Rebecca in and we'll have a chat. A little bit we're doing it backwards and uh, back to front at the moment, to be honest with you, because I've already spoken to her and I think she's got a great story. I think she's got a lot of things to tell you, um, which you might be interested in. Um, it's an uh, interesting past um, and Tenerife for her, I think, is um, yeah, it's something worth listening to. That's what I think, that's for sure anyway. So uh, without further ado, have a listen to uh, Rebecca Bottom. <laughs> Well, here we are. As I said, mentioned before, we're in our house. We're in my house. This is it, mine and Shelley's house. Obviously, it's pitch black outside. Never been down here before. And we've got Miss Rebecca Bond. Thank you. Thank you very for much for coming me. down here, Rebecca. I really, really appreciate it. Not that you didn't really have far to travel, to be honest with you. You only live up the street more than anything else. Uh, but honestly, I've been trying to get you for the last couple of weeks to come down and have a chat with you because I think one of the things that you've got for me is I think you've got a really quite an incredible story of what's going on in Tenerife at this moment in time. I know you've got a lot of stuff going on at the moment and we are going to talk about that as well. But also, I don't know, have you seen one of these podcasts before? Have you seen us do it before, the vlogcast? Well, you've just shown me now and it's very exciting. Right. Okay. Well, what we do... Before you do anything else, we always start off. We start off with a little bit of what we call a little bit of stalking. So we, when every, I try and do a little bit of my homework. Oh I try and see what's going on, do a bit of stalking. <laughs> Let's see if we get this right. Correct me if I'm wrong and you can stop me wherever you want to go. Okay, okay. wherever you are. Let me grab my glasses. I'm at home now. I can put my glasses on. This is where all my skeletons come out of the closet. Here we go. This is what people don't realise what they put on the internet. That's what this is. <laughs> Rebecca Bond, you have 1,717 people follow your page. Did do you know? I? You do, I did yeah. not know that. Name them. Just kidding. My um, mom, definitely. <laughs> my number one fan, my mother. We'll go from the first thing from there after that is your profile. I sing, I dance, I entertain. Is that about right? Triple threat. Does that sum it up? Triple threat. <laughs> That's a good triple whammy. Very good. Covering all bases. Really, really good. Uh, you've actually five out of five uh, review based on 224 people's reviews. That's not bad. That's good. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah. I told you it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I'm learning something as we go as well. There you go, you see. You only pass through this life once. You don't come back for an encore. 
And that was your <laughs> phrase by Elvis Presley. You copied that one down. I love Elvis. Yeah, Anybody we... that's seen me live knows I love Elvis. Yeah, so we're... I have to throw a little Elvis quote in wherever I go. We're, we're going we're gonna to touch on that okay. as well, yeah, because it's quite a bit... <laughs> when, I, when I go onto the internet and I start looking, I see a lot of Elvis floating around, by the this way, This is going to test my Elvis I, I really, really do. Uh, there's a few of them there. Uh, we're going to talk about the Elvises on the app. No, we're not. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Um, let's have a look. You joined Facebook in 2007. Did you know that? Thir- I did know that, actually. 13 years. 13 years. My God, it flies. Doesn't it? I've looked at that. It's just ridiculous how quick it goes. And you think, really, from there? Yeah. Um, it was only eight. <laughs> right answer. <laughs> um, you're a model at, uh, you were a model at Angels Elite Models? Yep. Okay. How many years did you do that for? Uh, so I went to Blackpool. Oh, God. I can't remember the year now. But I uh, entered the Miss Blackpool beauty pageant. Really? I did. Um, I can't remember the year. I want to say it was 2010. No. 2000 and... I don't know. Oh, we'll have a look. We'll I don't know. From there. A long time ago, anyway. Uh-huh. Uh, and I got to the top 10. Did you? And I did really well. And uh, Karen and Neil, who run Angels Elite Models, they were yeah. obviously a big part of the pageant yeah. world in Blackpool. They saw me and they offered me... Uh, a bit of modelling work with them, which I did. And then actually, from that, in... Again, can't remember the year, but I actually judged the Miss Blackpool beauty pageant. And you actually judged it as well? Yeah. Unbelievable. So I was in it first, and that's what opened the door for the modelling and everything for me. Oh, fantastic. I ended up judging it before I came over here. We are going to touch on Blackpool as well. You're from Lichfield? In Staffordshire, yep. Your birthday is the 23rd of Jan? I am, Aquarius. Uh, Same here, 29th. Um, birthday cards, please. Um, brother called Simon. Yeah. Mother called Julianne. Yes. I have the most amazing little boy that I am so overwhelmed with love for. He's perfect and I am the proudest mummy ever. True. I wrote that in 2012 when he was born. It's still true. And what's he called? His name is Arthur James. We know him as Artie. Hi, Artie. It is if Artie. If you're watching, how are you doing? Um, if look, if sorry, if love could build a stairway and memories build a lane, I climb right up to heaven and bring you home again. I take this mention about your dad. Yeah, yeah, and your dad was called Colin. Colin, That's Colin right. Arthur, and actually, there is a story behind this. Just quickly. Yeah, yeah, no, don't. don't. So my dad passed away on the thirtieth of June, two thousand and eleven. Okay. Um, I was in Portugal at the time on a contract, which we'll probably talk about later. Yeah. But um, I came home and unexpectedly got pregnant okay (laughs) when i went to the doctors they told me that my due date was the 30th of june 2012 exactly a year to the day that my dad had passed yeah oh wow um and obviously i had a boy and i wanted to give my dad a piece of you know his grandchild even though he would never meet him um and my mom and i spoke about it and my dad had famously said to my mom one time oh i'm not saddling any child of mine with the name colin not that there's anything <laughs> wrong with that name but yeah, he obviously wrong didn't like nothing it nothing wrong with collins so uh, yeah my dad was colin arthur so i decided well i'm going to call him arthur and give my little boy a piece of his granddad ah that's so that's lovely. where that's Ar- a beautiful arthur story. came from yeah but i love the way you've shortened that to arty as well because everybody knows him as arty yeah although he started saying now actually like i love but his friend's dad calls him Art, and he's like, I love how Andy calls me Art. Oh, so That's he's now, really cool. Is that now the thing to be called Art now for him? <laughs> God bless, man. He's, he's a great kid. Can I, am I right to put a picture of him up? Of course, we'll yeah. We'll put a picture of Artie up there as well. You'll see he's that in He's actually a, a model too and for for the Angels Elite Model Agency. Wait and see. I mean, this picture, you'll, you've, I've already put the picture on there that you've seen it. What a pose. I've got him outside Blackpool, um, outside the Blackpool Tower, the ballroom and stuff like that. I know like. the picture. And we'll talk all about it. You like a good check-in, by the way. So everywhere you go on Facebook, you are checking in everywhere. You oh, che- I'm opening myself up for stores. Ridiculous, man. You checked in at Doha in 2019. Mm-hmm. The one against me, Tutbury Castle on the 15th of September 2013. What were you doing there? At Tutbury Castle? Tutbury Castle. Where is it? It's in Tutbury. Where, where's that? <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't it's know in the Midlands is. somewhere right, okay. 38. But my best friend's dad is um, a chef, and he's a very good chef, actually. Right. Um, she, My best friend works on Charlie Yachts, and Simon, her dad, Simon Smith. Chef. Works on where? Charter Yachts, Millionaire's Yachts. Oh, Charter Yachts, right, okay, yeah, Millionaire's Yachts. Yeah, and I, I believe that her dad went to Saint-Tropez and actually cooked for Simon Cowell. Once. Really? Yeah. So he does all these big, fantastic functions, and it was, I think, New Year's Eve? Uh, let's have a quick look. This there one was, was maybe a few 15th times. of September, this one, 2013. Well, it would have been a Christmas party. Beautiful looking place. Yeah, and um, he obviously does these big functions and events, and Hayley, my best friend, said, come on, let's go. So, ah, it's great. It's an amazing looking place. Uh, you're a fan of 32 artists in music. 
on your Facebook page. Okay. Including one Dick Rock. <laughs> I don't know who he is. I've never heard of him. I've never seen you and Dick Rock in the same room. Well, it's a myth. It's mm-hmm. a myth. Um, there's a lot of Elvis Presleys on there as well, by the way. Elvis <laughs> Presley young, Elvis Presley adult. Um, we got, let's start there. What is it with Elvis Presley? What's the, what's the love of Elvis Presley? Do you know, I just... He's timeless. I mean, even Artie loves Elvis Presley. And really? I didn't particularly grow up listening to him. Um, it wasn't till sort of I got a bit older that I fully started to appreciate what an amazing performer he was, how he shaped music right. today. You know, the Beatles famously said, if it wasn't for Elvis Presley, there'd be no Beatles. Really? All right, I didn't know you that. You know, he was the birth of rock and roll, he, and that's why he's the king. And, you know, all these years after his death, we still have all these tribute artists Selling out shows. I mean, there's however many Elvis. I saw one today. On the she- <laughs> Shelley was Shelley was singing today, and we drove past the bar, and there was a, a, Elvis was on there as well. Yeah. So it's like he gets everywhere. Does Elvis? And but, they have. He has so many songs, different genres, and like. I how just, many How many songs do you do in your show? How many Elvis songs? Well, when I used to do the Elvis bar, I used to probably throw about five or six in. <laughs> so you did the Elvis bar what, over here. Yes. And where's that one? It's kind of Puerto Colón, Doriscus Way. Right. So yeah. is everybody walking there with big sideboards and like the big flares and, you know, the big suits and everything? You don't have to have sideboards well, to be I? an Elvis fan. Well, I've got, Although, no, <laughs> I've got, no, ch- I've got no chance. I've got no chance. But it's, um, you, you still throw Elvis in your shows even to this day. Yeah. Yeah. You still love it. And there's a funny story. I have, this is the yeah, thing. Yeah, do I'm it. Just Let's go for it. Talk Let's talk. go for it. So there's a funny story. So when I was working in Blackpool, I had an agent called Sean. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was talking to him in a bar one day. Never speak to your agent when you're in a bar and there's alcohol involved. <laughs> Just don't do it. But I was saying to him, oh, I want to do an Elvis tribute act. And he's saying, I've never been asked for a female Elvis. A female Elvis. And I said, that's because there isn't one. You have to think outside the box. You know, people don't want, don't know what they want until you tell them. Right. So I said, I've got this fantastic idea. Miss Presley, I'm going to be... <laughs> Miss Presley, I'm going to do an hour's worth of Elvis songs and I could do, you know, a sexy jumpsuit. For you, that would be your dream job. I would love it. (laughs) And he said, right, okay, you get the show together and I'll book it. And he did actually book me a date at one of the hotels in Blackpool for an Elvis weekender. But sadly, I had to pull it because I got a job in Doha, Qatar, which I just could not turn down. Unbelievable. But yeah, I did get booked as Miss Presley. I was in... Blackpool, you it missed out. It was in out. my diary. Blackpool, you missed out. You could have had Miss Presley down at never Blackpool. Never say never. I might still. Um, final thing, just to finish on your stalking. You like the Inferno Man. What's that? I have no idea. You've got it on your thing. That's the thing, you see. You've got it on there. It's nice to be nice. And friends invite you to like pages. We, I get that and, a lot. When I've spoken to a know, few of them, I get that a lot. You have to support your friends and other artists and people that are trying to make things and, you know, think of new creative ways to, to survive. <laughs> and a couple of my friends invited me to, like, Inferno Man page, but, do you know, I am going to check it out when I get <laughs> find out exactly what it is. And the final thing on there is your TV show you like, CSI. I love CSI. Do you? I've never seen it. I've never watched it. <laughs> when I lived in Gran Canaria, there was uh, about six of us, showgirl dancers, uh, all lived in a house together. Yeah. And we used to finish the show at kind of 11, 12 o'clock at night, get home, and we used to say, oh, we'll watch an episode of CSI. And I'll always remember this one time. One of the episodes was CSI Vegas. All right, okay. And it was about a man coming into this house of showgirls in no. Vegas. So you're all there. <laughs> it's about to happen to you guys as well. And exactly. It was exactly the same. And we were all like, oh. <laughs> and then my friend, uh, her dad, he came and visited from England. And he bought us all CSI baseball caps. So that's the... Well, that's the reason I, I must have to look at it. I mean, I got about as far as the bill in the UK and I got a bit bored, so maybe the American stuff will work from there. To be honest with you, Rebecca, I've I, I found worse from a lot of other people, to be honest with you. You're pretty clean living by the looks of it. Yeah, I, know. I might have to push a little bit further to see what else we can get from there, but we'll have a look at that in a second. You've got your drink. I've got mine. Cheers. Cheers. Let's have a drink on that one and uh, let's have a chat and find out about what you've been up to, uh, really, in your career. <laughs> We're back, we're back again. Yes, um, we've done your stalking. Your stalking's out of the way. Um, that's good enough. What I'd like to do is, um, for me, the reason why I asked to, if I could have a chat with you for the uh, for the podcast was um, I met you when, did you. when did you arrive on the island? When was it exactly? The 20th of August. So you got your date, 20th of August. Last year. Last year? Is that, so it's just over a year now that's gone by. Yeah. So I met you literally on your first week when you were here because, you know, we're actually living on the same complex and... I was uh, working out behind a bar and you walked in and we had a bit of a chat and stuff like that. And it was, um, you know, you, I think you saw Shelley the night before 
and you were down on Seven Islands and you'd gone in with Spencer, I think it was. You saw yeah. Shelley the night before and you came in, you saw me sat there and you went, I just wanted to say this, 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 this. It wasn't about me. It was all about <laughs> Shelley. It's normally the case. It happens to me all the time. Um, but before we get to that point and move it forward, let's go back even further. What got you to Tenerife? What got you to where you were to be the singer? But I know you've also got a history of not actually the singer. It's the history of Rebecca Bond, the dancer. Yeah. So let's start there. Before we start, though, if you hear the noises, we are actually in the house. We're on the runway. So if a plane comes in, you can hear it coming over now. Uh, that's what we do. We're normally in a... That's a helicopter, I think. Um, but what actually now gets you from Rebecca Bond, the, from the dancer to the singer? How did it all start? Um... Well, yeah. <laughs> how long have we got? Well, we've got, we've got enough. How long have you got? If you've you got enough, let's stick along for the ride and let's see what we do, okay? Um, if I start from the very, very beginning... Yeah, let's do it. Um, I always danced from when I was younger and I used to do competitions and I did really well in competitions. And what type of dance was that? In all sorts. Right. I was actually the senior classical ballet champion when I was 16. Classical ballet? For the Midlands, yeah. Look at that. You got, Before you got I grew the poise. boobs and a <laughs> boobs and a bum. <laughs> Oh, is that, but, like, um, is that a bad thing in ballet? No, no booze, no bums. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no chance. <laughs> so I used to do competitions every weekend. My mum, obviously, it's not a cheap hobby. My mum invested lots of time, money, yeah. effort, energy. She makes all the costumes and everything else. Um, and when I got to sort of A-level age, I decided that I wasn't going to dance. I wanted to be a wedding planner. Like you do? I did my A-levels. Did you see the film or something like I, that? It was just something, you know, <laughs> something I thought, oh, that sounds fun. And that's me, cool let's and, do it. Like, party, you can go to people's weddings all the time. And <laughs> so that's what I decided I was going to do. I did my A-levels, I did six A-levels, actually. You did six? Yep. How many did you get? Did you get six? I got all six. Two A's, two B's, really? two C's, yeah. Oh, wow. My, my daughter's done three and she dropped two. She dropped one to get the two, so I, mean, I, know, yeah. I know how hard it is. You got six A-levels. I was a bit of a geek. Bloody hell. Right, okay, sorry. I still right. am. <laughs> You, so that's, really, that's impressive so yeah you got the a-levels then so then i got accepted to university to do mm -hmm. functions and events management but my mom said listen i've paid all this money i put all this time in you're so good you love it just go and do a season at holiday camp right in between finishing my a-levels and so September like, that I was due to go to Heidi High, Butlins, Pontins. So I went to Pontins, Pontins. And this is where it all kind of... And what colour coat are you? I was a blue coat. A blue coat, right, okay. The only colour. No, well, yeah. <laughs> we do don't that. talk about any other colour. <laughs> okay. But um, so I went and the plan was I was only going to do sort of a couple of months over the summer. Got there, loved it, made some amazing friends. They offered me dance captain and if I stayed again, which meant I was a lot more involved in the in the blue coat shows. I was a blue coat dancer. Right. Um, I ended up staying there for two seasons um, and then I thought, do you know what, this is what I love to do. Yeah. I just want to be on the stage, forget everything else. I ended up going down to London just one day. Throw the air levels in the closet, Basically, just leave them in there, put, oh, them, in, put, them, in the, put them in the They'll bag, under the bed, they're always going to be there. They'll be there when I need them. <laughs> um, I went down to London, I auditioned for a company called Spirit of the Dance. Right. Um, and I got the job with them, and I've got a I've got a Michael Flatley feeling going on here. Cause yeah, it's like... it, well, it is like a Irish river dance kind of show. Right. Okay. They have other shows, and I was in another one of their shows. Right. Um, but within sort of a week or two after doing the audition, I got my contract to go to America, and dance in America for twelve months. So I went to South Carolina, Myrtle Beach. And what sort of age are we here? Oh, was I nineteen? About nineteen. No, twenty. I turned twenty-one when I was there. Okay. Um, just as so I was 21, there, so I was old to enough America. to drink because <laughs> it's 21 Get the minutes. priorities right, yeah. I'm not so, going there then, I'll go the year after. <laughs> yeah, um, and I was there for 12 months. Uh, it was good, cool. like, I loved it, it was amazing. I made some fantastic friends there. Yeah. Um, and then after that, I literally flew home. My parents were picking me up from the airport and I said, before we go home, I just need to go, because I flew to Gatwick or Heathrow, one of the two. Yeah, yeah. I was like, before we go back up to the Midlands, I just need to go because there's an audition in London and I want to go to it. So uh, my parents drove me to London, sat in the car, waited for however long and potted around. And I got the job for the second audition that I did, yeah. uh, which was to be a showgirl in Gran, Gran Canaria. All right, okay. So And who was it for in Gran Canaria? What, what was it? So I worked in a place called the Red and Black Casino right. in Melanaris. Right. Uh, it was like a Vegas show with a, a singer called Adam Marks. R right. Okay. Um, and this is where I told you we had a bit of our CSI yes, so marathon this, scare. Right. So that's all happened there with the scare that was going. In, yeah. <laughs> right. 
Um, so I did that for about six or seven months, maybe longer, I don't know. Uh, then came home, uh, and then one of the girls that I worked with on that contract, we went together to audition again for right. P&O Cruises. Right. Um, and we got the job together, and both we were both called Becky. We were both blonde, similar height. Um, so we did that contract in Gran Canaria together, and then we went and we were cabin mates for the P&O contract that I did. And you were travelling world or Europe? or So yeah, the first contract that I did with P&O was a world cruise. So, so you've been around the world? Yeah. And I did two contracts and I was dance captain. So in the rehearsal process, we rehearsed in London for two months, yeah, yeah. something like that. Um, and at the start of the rehearsal process, they sort of allocate a dance captain. Yeah. So I was kind of, my job was to sort of oversee the cast and the choreography and make sure everything was right and the costumes getting were right. Getting it tight, getting timings. Right. And... Yeah, core cool rehearsals, clean rehearsals, um, yeah. like sort of liaise with the cruise director and things like that. So... I was dance captain for two contracts on P&O and because it was a world cruise, yeah. uh, each world cruise was sort of three months. We did other cruises, so we did Caribbean cruises and Mediterranean cruises and everything else in between. What a job. But I <laughs> did <laughs> two world cruises, so I can officially say I've been around the world twice. Oh my God. Uh, and I had obviously, I think I had two or three birthdays because there was a bit of a transition period in between. Yeah. And I remember I had one birthday in Mumbai. Like you do. I had one birthday in Barbados. Like you do. <laughs> and I can't remember where the other one was. Sure, but yeah. that's, that's incredible. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. I think I had one birthday in Newcastle, <laughs> <laughs> one birthday in Middlesbrough. But that's brilliant. So you've, you've, gone all, you've done all the cruises from there. Yeah. And then the transition into into singing, How what well, happened there? I actually did another dance contract after that, which was in Portugal. So right. this is when my dad was kind of... And I wanted to be sort of somewhere where it was easily. So this I is around about two thousand and thirteen ish, was it? No, this is before. This is right. two thousand and like ten. Okay. Um, and I went to Portugal, uh -huh. which is where I actually met Artie's dad. Right. He's a dancer also. Um, He's a dancer as well. Yeah, he dances now at the Moulin Rouge in Paris. The the actual I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. I've not been in, but I've been past there. That's I've been there that's many incredible. times. Yeah. So Artie's dad is also a dancer. Oh phenomenal. That, well, obviously a, that's where a... Artie gets you know, I've seen the, the poise and the stuff like that. Yeah. Your, that picture you'll see later on, that's where it shows. You can tell you absolutely tell hundred percent that he's the, yeah. the kid's a dancer. It's in his blood. Yeah, without a shadow of a doubt. So yeah, I was in Portugal, um and that's obviously when my dad passed away and I came mm -hmm. home and I stayed with my mom. But in between all that I feel like I missed those out like I've done other stuff in between you know there's months in between where I've done like UK tours yeah yeah uh, I did TV shows Louis Spence's show business I was on that were you? yeah oh, I remember that as well I remember uh, he, he came from Pineapple Dance Studio yeah, wasn't it that's where he came yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Down. Did, you, so he, he was hilarious I take it yes well we the episode that we did we were back in dancing for David Van Day I want to say and Sue Moxley David Van Day. Is that the blonde haired guy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he was like doing a revival. Well, I find this whole... on YouTube. Possibly. I'll, I'll go look him. I'll go look oh, him. I shouldn't too. have told him. Have. <laughs> and the whole thing was he was doing this like revival thing and he has dancers behind and we were rehearsing at Pineapple and it was kind of covered in the in the show. So I think we were in one, maybe two episodes. Right. Me and a few of my friends. Um, I'll have to go hunting. See if, yeah, I, if I can find I, it, I can find it. If I, I can. did have a link. I'm sure one of my friends, if they watch this, will probably we'll send the link. We'll get it. <laughs> get it. We had these blue, like hot pants and waistcoats on, and I remember it. And we'd <laughs> done this show in like the Hard Rock Cafe in London. It was really good. Amazing. Yeah. And then, so for, again, we, we're going to get from that to the singing because to me, it's like that's who I know you as. Obviously, mm -hmm. I know you're the dancer. I've seen all that. And we're going to talk about the show as well. But what at what point did you turn around and go right? Uh, I'm going to sing. I'm going to I'm going to sing. Uh, it just got to the point, I mean, I did contracts after that and it was finally, you know, I turned 30 and I was still dancing. Um, and even though I was doing more choreography and more of the production side of it, I was like, you know, I can't do what I used to be able to do. My legs don't There is a lifespan. Yeah, there's a lot, yeah. You know, you put your body through so much and yeah. I was getting older and I just thought, I can sing. Mm -hmm. I can sing. Oh, no, don't say like I, that. I know you can sing. Yeah. You don't need to say it like that. You can, <laughs> no, no, you can no. sing. I know you can sing. But I thought, well, you know, I just love being on stage. I love performing. And if I am struggling, not struggling with the dancing, it was more kind of missing Artie at night and yeah. working six nights a week in a show that I was in at the time. And I thought, right, I'm going to be my own boss. I'm going to sing and then I can do the gigs that I want to do, work the nights that I want to work. Um, and that's how it happened. 
That's a, it's, that sounds like a good segue to actually get you into the idea of them talking about Tenerife, and we'll do that. Have another drink. Feel free to have another drink, and we'll come back straight in a second. <laughs> I know that it feels like we've most probably accelerated your life there to get you to the point of where we're at, but and it sounds like you've just had a, a, a massive, you know, from the from the early age to under thirty, really. Just you've crammed so much in. Mm. It's absolutely. It, it, it sounds phenomenal. You've been around the world twice. Birthdays in Barbados. Um, you know, it, you, you met Louis Spencer, for Christ's sake. What, what more can you say? You can't say any more than that. That's I, yeah, I forget what I've done sometimes. <laughs> like afterwards, I was like, "Oh, mate, I remember I did this and this." And this. Which it, I've been very lucky. It sounds it sounds great. And then obviously you, we know that you, obviously you said you think you can. Sing. We know you can sing. There, there was a decision then. Obviously, when it comes to age, I mean, I, people know me. I was I was an, an ex pro golfer, and age catches up, and injuries catch you up as well. And then you have to make life choices, etc. Um, you decided to come to Tenerife. Yeah. It was August the twentieth. August the twentieth. 2019 uh sorry yeah 2019 just last year yeah uh, i met you i'd only been here maybe a year myself mm-hmm. back over this time and you were the energy that you came onto the island with of who you are hi i'm this person instant instant like ability like ability factor just without before i'd even seen your show <laughs> it was like yeah let's go we need to go on, we need to go and see uh, rebecca bond um how did that find it with you before let's before pre-covid let's say how did you find the the, the the your first experience on the island working on the island and seeing it from there how how was that for you well i mean it's just it's a dream isn't it you know i'm doing something that i love i'm singing i'm performing i'm still on stage yeah but i'm doing it on a beautiful island with gorgeous weather it's such a relaxed atmosphere everybody's lovely there's a real sense of community here um so, you know, I was just happy to be here. And I'd wanted for a long time to come to Tenerife. My mum's lived here for, I want to say, four years. Yeah, yeah. And we, I would always come over and, you know, circumstances at the time meant that I was had to stay in England. But when my circumstances changed, I thought, right, now's the time. I'll go over. Yeah. So I came and I was it's just so excited to be here. Yeah. Doing what I love in a gorgeous place. and From what I can remember, there was a singer on the island that took you under his wing. Yeah. And got you into all the bars and got you got you up and running really got you you know you, so you, you landed and then whoop you were off straight away yeah. up and running and um, I saw you I mean I, th- I think I saw you within two weeks that you've been on the island and you you were just like a breath of fresh air I mean that that's the, but it's the truth you it was something where you know people on the island you, you, I've been on and off this island now for thirty years um, lived here before this is my second time around living here and you come across entertainers that are a little bit. They've done, it, they've done it for a while. I mean, I used, to, I used to teach golf and I used to be able to be on remote control while my head was working about what I need to do, the shopping, etc. You were fully into the show that you do and you've not let that up. You, I mean, the, the dancing that goes along with it, you know. Explain explain your show. What, what, is it, what is it that you do? Come on, explain it. I do a bit of everything. Yeah, but what? It, yeah. I just, well, I get there. But I don't really have anything planned, so I don't have sort of a set. Uh, well, that's the first. List. That's the first refreshing thing, by the way, because a lot of them do. Yeah. You know, and you sit there and you go, "Yeah, this is going to be next." I know. mean, I have obviously my favourites that I probably sing yeah. more often than others, but I tend to walk into a venue, have a look at the audience, and think, "Okay, I'm going to sing '60s or '70s," or "Okay, maybe I need to do a bit more modern stuff." So, so people who don't know have never come across Rebecca Bond. You're actually doing '60s, you're doing '70s, you do. We do '50s. We got. Don't you got Elvis. 50s as well. God, yeah. Elvis, Connie Francis, Doris Day. We go, we go. We go all, all the way through back. The decades, yeah. Oh my! So you, you literally just look at the audience, see what the type of audience is, and you, that's what you actually aim the show at. I try to, yeah. Right, and it's from '50s all the way through to. Are you doing '2000s? Oh, I'm maybe getting close. Yeah, getting close. That's so. <laughs> that's amazing. But then also, what I like about it is you put the it's, it's the the interaction that you have with the audience as well. So it's not a question of um, where it's just I'm on stage, I'm there to perform to you. You're actually in amongst the people of, and obviously it's changed at this moment in time. But when you first came over, you were amongst the people, and you were you know getting them up dancing. You were you know yeah. you were doing the dancing yourself. Well, I always remember one of my old bosses saying to me I was doing a show and he sat us all down on the stage and give us a little pep talk and I always remember him saying if you enjoy what you do the audience will love it too they will enjoy it yeah you know even if you go wrong anything you could be doing the wrong completely the wrong steps 
it doesn't matter as long as you're enjoying yourself that transmits and everybody that's watching you will enjoy it as well and i it just really stuck with me and i always think there's a, how right is that there's a, there's a brilliant piece of video that i'm going to show now that's going to get played now as we're talking and it was you down at the waterfall on golf del sur and it was with old man peter who oh, actually I know the video. peter actually lives across the road <laughs> peter lives across the road from me Hi, peter. and he's uh, he's mostly back in the uk if you're watching or somebody knows him you can show him this patsy and peter i can what i mean this guy had a great time he was in, and he was he was he, he always does he was what an what an amazing guy to see and the the energy that came off him and the way you two reacted on at the waterfall because it's i was looking for it the other day and i found it i found it i recorded it and it's going to go on there now and it was just one of the most i was working that day down there and it was just he put a smile on my face and that's what you do for people you actually put a smile on the faces for people and the sort of shows that you give and i've got to give you credit for that and that's why i think for myself it was one of you know it was it was important to actually go and get you to chat with you to have a conversation to find out you know how you do it and what you get up to with it. I thought, do you remember that day itself? I do. I, I think I'm singing "Rocking All Over the World." Yeah, I think I think it's, <laughs> I, I, I think it is. I'll, I'll have a look and see what it was, but it could have been from he, there. He, yeah, I, Peter um, and Patsy, they're good friends of my mom's, and they come and they support me when they're over here. Yeah, uh, often. And Peter is always the same. He's always up dancing. I mean, I don't know how old he is, but you know, he's. He's, he's over he's, 21. He's, <laughs> he's very sprightly for his age. Let's say definitely that, put it that way. But yeah. And I don't think about it like you know. I like I say, I just love what I do. It's, uh, I love every minute of it. It was to me that epit- that moment there epitomizes me a Rebecca Bond show. It really does because you see people just clapping along, but then you see this gentleman get up there and start <laughs> dancing the way he does. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. I really, really did. Um, you've come to Tenerife. You've got this show. Yeah. You are. Um, you're taking the island really. You, you're, you, you're smashing the island without a shadow of a doubt. I mean, you just. I'm not. That's not um, buttering you up. That's the truth. You, every, you, we we know. I mean, we know each other well, but we see you everywhere, and we see what the reaction is from people. And then COVID comes and hits you. Yeah. Now, for me, I had a year's head start on you on the island. So to me, it was a little bit like I'm prepared for it and ready to go. You've just come in, going, yeah, I'm ready, and then somebody just COVID just smacked yeah. you in the face. I mean, I picked the worst, but it, this is the thing. It was so unexpected. None of us knew it was coming, no. and you know, in hindsight, it. Was but I'm here now and I love it and I don't want to go anywhere. So I don't think you've changed just... it. I think you'd still come out. I think you'd still done it. Yeah, possibly. I mean, everybody's in the same situation. When I was working in Blackpool before, obviously I'm friends with entertainers on the Blackpool circuit, still on Facebook and everything. And I see it's the same everywhere. Sadly, yeah. live entertainment is really struggling. And you know, it's it's how... we're doing what we can. But you you've hit lockdown. It's March this year. Um, you've got Artie, who's was he seven at the time? Yeah. And then you know you, that, that's most. I, I, I can only imagine that's most probably the hardest thing because you've brought a child over to the island to go. Look, we're going to express. You know, we're going to open this child's eyes up maybe to a different culture, a different language, etc. And he's in the school system, and then the schools close down, mm-hmm. and then you know you, you want him to go and make friends, and then he's housebound. Yeah. That must have been one of the hardest things. I mean, we were fortunate because I hadn't been there very long, but I had. Uh, a really nice house yeah so we had a back garden uh ours was a duplex so it was obviously two-story and he had his own big bedroom yeah he had space um because i feel like if he hadn't have been able to sort of run about and let a bit off a bit of steam oh, it was it a seven-year-old boy man He's a just... lot harder than it yeah, was yeah, yeah. um so we were really fortunate in that respect but yeah it was really tough although you know try and look on the bright side of everything he and i were learning spanish together yeah so how's your spanish <laughs> not as good as yours <laughs> well, you know. it's getting there it's getting there I actually probably know more than I Let give on. myself credit yeah, for that's what, that's what most people tend to do yeah well. that's it's good. just the confidence How, I'll tell you what, let's change it how's Artie Spanish um, again I think he knows more than he lets us know yeah you know well kids do that he's so stubborn if I say to him oh how do you say this in Spanish he says I don't know I don't know but we went camping um to one of the camping places just down the road yeah. and we were the only English people there yeah. and obviously he sat there for a little bit watching all the Spanish kids play with a face on him and I said just go you know go and introduce yourself you know how to say my name is Artie yeah, how yeah. are you can I play um, and after a while you know he was well in there and I'm hearing him speak Spanish and I'm hearing him communicate with the Spanish children but yet when I ask him yeah. to talk Spanish with me he's got this war he won't do it 
but that's, he does more he speaks more than I think I know he I does. think that's I think you'll find that from all kids and I yeah. think you'll find you know when I, we first worry about it but then eventually all of a sudden he's just away and his language will just crack on and before you know it he'll be talking uh, I mean he's half Cuban as well oh, yeah, so, so yeah he's got a head start most, <laughs> above, above most other you know kids yeah. coming out I was going to say coming out of Blackpool but he's got you know he's definitely got a head start from there yeah. with it as well so you've got the lockdown the lockdown's gone through if I gave you um, three words lockdown for you was it good was it average or was it bad Oh, it was good. It was good. I mean, apart from the financial, you know, you, you put that aside, obviously, you know, yeah, well, there's, all, there's uh, the worry of paying your bills and, yeah. and everything else. But actually, I always try and look on the positive. I had quality time with Artie, which is one of the reasons that I moved over here. You know, yeah. I wanted him and I a fresh start and we could do that together. And mm-hmm. um, I just got to stop. I'd been working so hard uh, before I came over here, I was working on a show. We'd done a, a tour, and I was exhausted from that. Yeah. Obviously, then, like you say, you know, when you're building up a reputation on the island, I'm out and about every night, meeting people, trying to get gigs. Yeah, yeah. And, and working hard, of course. And so it was nice to have a little relax, uh, spend some time with Artie. I did. Obviously, I have a boyfriend that I spent lockdown with. So yeah. You know, I wasn't on my own. I'm sure a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. A lot struggled of people. I've, if I've, they were we, going through it. We touched on this in the previous podcast. I had a great, I had a great one. As you, I mean, you're fully aware. Everybody knows yeah. about Shelley and on here anyway. But it's um, to me, it was, a, it was a, my my lockdown was very good. Uh, just as an aircraft coming over, by the way, if you can hear that again, I don't think it's coming in, hopefully, but it's coming over. Yeah, hopefully keep going. They're bringing tourists. Yeah, keep going. Bring your money. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact is, it's, um, I can imagine for other people, it's been really difficult. But that was the reason why I want to speak to other people and find out how theirs was as well. Um, what I was going to say was the idea for me is um, knowing about the island, knowing about the entertainers on the island. You came onto the island, you, you, you're doing your first year. You're a surefire hit for a nomination for... Um, on the island, we've got a thing called the Tenerife Entertainers Awards. Uh, you're definitely a surefire hit for a nomination for Best Newcomer. Um, you know, There's a couple of other people in the category that you're most probably looking around and seeing as well because you know, a couple of others that came on. Um, and then everything got looked down and got cancelled. Um, how does how does that make you feel? Because I think you're a competitive person. Why 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 do you think that? Because the way you've just I did this, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, we're there. I think this, you I asked think, me what I do. I know, I know, but it's, I think that I know, but the, the passion. I think you're a passionate person on what you do in your craft. Yeah. I think we'll rephrase that. You're a passionate person on what you do in your craft. I think for yourself, it's one of those ones. It's like you've got your eye on a prize, and you think that's yeah. your goal, and then that. I, I don't try and compete with anybody else. I just all the time. I just want to make myself better. I think I think you'd have most probably got the best newcomer this year. I genuinely believe I think you'd have most probably got the, most probably got the best newcomer this year because the, from what I've seen, I've seen the how hard you'd have worked for it. I've seen the amount of people that love your shows that you do it as well. If you've not seen Rebecca Bond, by the way, and you're living on the island or you're coming over to the island, you definitely definitely have to look up this show because it is <laughs> it's one of those ones. It's 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 a, it's an hour of a party. That's what it is. You, you you no matter what mood you're feeling, you're walking straight into a party. And that's what I like about it as well. And I think it's, it's anything that the fact that that let, the truth is the Terry Fan Entertainment Awards, if that got taken away, is that is that a little bit like, oh, I mean, it's it's obviously nice to be recognised for your hard work. But, mm-hmm. you know, you sitting there saying such lovely comments, that's enough recognition, you know, getting booked. For me, is all that I'm asking for. At the minute. <laughs> just, Walker, people just book my show. That's all I want. Um so yeah, I mean, obviously it's sad, not just for me, but for all the other entertainers. There's loads of other categories that people would be going for, but you know, it, yeah. it is what it is. And the whole world is having to adapt and make sacrifices. And I know people who's had their weddings cancelled, they've had holidays to Vegas yeah, cancelled, yeah, 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 yeah. and this, that and the other. And yeah, it sucks and it's awful, but you know, what can we do? It is, you well, just have is, to is carry it, on. Is and... it steps that say we're all in this together? Or is it high school musical? I can't remember which one it is. That's definitely high school musical. <laughs> I need to change my own It's great, yeah. Let's, 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 let's take a bit more cup. Can we have a cheers? Let's have a cheers, cheers. to that one, Rebecca. Cheers. Thank you very much. So you've got yourself... Oh, the next door's dog started as well. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, it makes a change. Last time I had somebody on my shoulder talking behind the bar, so it makes a change. We've got a dog there anyway. Um, so what happened from here was we got through COVID. Lockdown's yep. ended. We've still got no tourists on the island. No. Um, you've now... Well, the entertainers have picked themselves back up again and they've gone back out. And you yourself have done that as well. Um, how are you finding it now at this moment in time? 
to obviously it's completely different to what it was like but how you find it how you find it at this present moment in time i mean it's tough mm-hmm. i went from doing two or three gigs a night mm-hmm. sort of six nights a week to now doing two or three gigs a week right um so i mean first and foremost the financial implications are, are huge on people yeah. yeah and as i said during lockdown i had a house and the rent was a lot of money and obviously i couldn't afford it so yeah. i am now having to live back with my mom mm-hmm. which i haven't done for hence the reason why we're neighbors that's the reason why we're neighbors <laughs> yeah um but you know i love my mom she's like i say she's so supportive of me and everything and she would do anything for me and Artie. so she helps me out no end but once which... but once again talking about i mean i said earlier on about the competitive edge you've, you've put your trainers on and you're quick out the blocks and that's that's Again, credit to you because I've seen that. Because now all of a sudden, uh, Rebecca Bond's on Top Square. I think the, the thing at the beginning was at Top Square. Yeah. Um, you're in town again, and mm-hmm. you know you're doing you're doing gigs around there as well. Is it um is there a strategy in there, or is it a question of like let's see what we can get now before the tourists come back? Is it a, you know it's just is is there a, it sounds awful, but is there a thought pattern there? Or is it because you're just looking at the looking at the landscape, going this is what we have? I mean, yeah, there's an element of that. And also during lockdown, it was a case of, right, what can I do? Because, you know, something's got to change. So I'm thinking I need to use this time productively. You had your live shows? I did my live shows on Facebook. They were yeah. great. Well, they, what, they were Fridays. Were they Friday nights? I did, was doing Fridays at seven. Don't, yeah. don't scoot out Sorry. of the picture, by the way. <laughs> we got... <laughs> They gave uh, me gin. Yeah, we've got the gin, we've got the wheelie chair. So um, they were Fridays. Yeah. And they were, um, I mean, they, they're hitting thousands of people, by the way, from I did. Seen. I did one live show, got 17,000 views. 17,000 views? Yeah. That's mega. Yeah. How do that make you feel? I, well, I don't know. Yeah, that's I it. I mean, that's flabbergasted. But I just like, the, you know, it's, it's so weird when you do a live show because you're singing into the phone and it's so, just weird. Like, like, it's, it's, a bit like, like, it's a bit like this, yeah. You, you think we're talking to God knows how many people, but the fact is it's just me and you in one room and you're there with a camera. And the live show is exactly the same. You've got the camera on the phone, you're going live, and you are doing your show, performing in... Uh, it's it's in just the... me having fun in the back garden <laughs> with my mum and a few of her mates, you know. Cheering you along behind the camera. That's brilliant. So to know that like that many people have tuned in and that many people enjoy it, and you know, I put a PayPal link on and people yeah. were so generous with that, and that really helped during lockdown when you know, yeah. we weren't able to work and I appreciate thank you to anybody that uh, sent me a virtual tip that became a big thing across the island that people were doing that on the yeah. island and it's, it, I think it's a, I think that's been a lifeline for a lot you know for a lot of the Completely. entertainers at the moment um you still do lives um I haven't done any recently because a I'm busy with other projects which I know you're going to ask me about later yep yep um and also I don't know Facebook changed the rules I don't know. I need to look into it. Right. Okay. But it's they've, but, been, they've been very popular. You've enjoyed doing them. Yeah. And that's also something that you've uh, you've seen in the transition of going through lockdown into you know reopening itself up at this moment in time. Yeah. So let's say Rebecca Mon at this moment in time, looking from here now into the future, mm-hmm. you've got your you've got a, you said three gigs, maybe three three shows a week at this moment in time. Yeah, on average. Building that up. Sometimes more, sometimes less. Okay, so you're trying to build it <laughs> up, trying to build, yeah. But the issue is that pe- I don't think people fully realise at the moment is that um, shows are getting cancelled by the day because there is no tourists. Mm-hmm. And there's only, um, I th- me personally, there's only a pool of people that are on this island that go to these shows and, you know, money's tight. Yeah. And you've, people have got to just, you know, pick and choose where they need to go. So it's getting, I think it's actually getting harder. I think the, it's getting less and less as you see. Um, oh, I agree. From what I've seen with people out, I was I was in town this evening and the streets were almost empty. They were deserted. Yeah. And what, what are we at this moment in time? We're on um, for people listening. We're actually it's October the twenty first, twenty twenty, and um, the lockdown's still going on. The sorry, the quarantine's still going on in the UK. They're talking about tier threes in the northeast and the northwest. Um, so that's no time soon. That looks like it's not going to you know clear up. What I have seen. Is I've seen thanks to the people like at Vivo, so I, did, I spoke to the guys at Vivo. Mm-hmm. The you know the artists now are creating their own shows or are looking at it from a different point of view and going, well, I tell you what, if it's not out there, we're going to have to go and make it. Of course. And this is what brings us now to your next phase, really, or the next chapter. Yeah. This was decided maybe I heard about this first time maybe four weeks ago, I think, or three weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. Tell us what this is. So, like I say, I, we were in lockdown, and I thought, right, what can I do? Um, I know I'm a dancer, I know I'm a singer, 
I could do a show dancing and singing. I could do a show with me and dancers. I've got costumes. I've got ideas. I've got when, when you mention when you mention costumes, this isn't like the sort of costumes I'd wear to a fancy dress. <laughs> this is like this is like Vegas, costumes. baby. This is like <laughs> feathers and everything. Actually, you put the headdress on. It weighs bleeding some, by the way. This is a spoiler alert, Rick. Oh right, okay. Well, <laughs> but oh, I got big feather headdresses and rhinestones and glitz and glamour, and it's really something. And so this is a show that you've put together. Yeah. It's called Here Come the Girls. Here Come the Girls. So yeah. obviously, it's you alone. No. 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 Who's it with? So it's me singing. Yes. And then I have two dancers behind me, Kim and Ellie. But these dancers are no ordinary dancers. They are professional dancers? Yes. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're from the schools over here or dancing? Uh, where, 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 did you, where did you find Kim and Ellie? Okay, so Artie, my little boy, he yeah. goes to a dance school in Los Cristianos called Rip Mania. Okay. Um, and one of his teachers, Ellie, um, she's a lovely girl, um, obviously still dancing. And I yeah. just rang her up during lockdown and said... Right, I've got this idea. Are you on board? And she said, "Yeah." So you've become so, you've become dance captain again. <laughs> and gone right. Come on, listen basically. up, everybody. Um, yeah, like you know, you say if it's not out there, you have to you have to make it. And the sh- and the show's going to be it's going to be down at Vivo. Yeah. This one's actually this one's already this is the weekend, isn't it? It Friday. So it's on Friday. No Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, get Don't it right. turn up on it doesn't, Friday. It doesn't matter. It's sold out anyway. Um, but it's sold out. But you, you've actually sold this one out. Sold out in four days. You sold out in four days. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank Congrats. you. I always say this. If Daz was watching and Daz was with us, he'd always give it a round of applause. How are you, Daz? All right. <laughs> uh, but well done. Sold out in Thank four you. days. That's absolutely brilliant. Are you doing any more? Yes. Right. More in the pipeline or more like it's nailed on? It's I can give you. This is. We've not actually officially announced this yet, but I will tell you. Ooh. We've booked um, a second date for the Here Come the Girls show, Brilliant. which is going to be the 29th of November. The 29th of November at Vivo. Sunday, the 29th of November at Vivo. And who do they need to speak to about the tickets? So, Rebecca Bond Tenerife is my Facebook page. Yeah. You can send me a message uh, to that Facebook page and then we can go Absol- from there. Absolutely brilliant. And how are the rehearsals going? I am loving dancing. But yeah, <laughs> I did. We did the tech rehearsal and the dress rehearsal yesterday at the venue. Right, uh, and it was a long day. We were there eleven till six. Hence the reason I couldn't speak to you yesterday. Hence the yes, reason I were at my sorry. house now because we would we, would have been in the pub. <laughs> 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 but you were there. How did it go? Um, I mean, it was amazing. I loved it, and I just can't wait to do it for an audience now. Brilliant, and it's a sold out audience that are coming in on Saturday yeah. to watch it. Nerves. Yep. Um, there were a few nerves, but after doing the tech run and doing it on the venue, on the stage and seeing the venue, I'm more excited than I am nervous. Oh, I, I think it's going to go absolutely amazing Although, for you. Although, if you ask me on Saturday, I'll, I'll probably you. be really nervous. I'll be seeing you on Saturday, I'll be asking you on Saturday how <laughs> so, that's going to go. So I wish, listen, yeah, I'm I wish just you, excited at the minute. I wish you all the best for that, but it's, you. it's brilliant if you're already in a position to go, look, we're going to do another date straight after it as well. Well, we still were having people ask um, after we'd sold out, even though we'd said like sold out. Yeah. People saying, oh, you know, have you got a spare? Can you fit two more tickets in? And But obviously with COVID and the regulations, it is a strict yeah, yeah. Certain, certain amount of certain people. number and, you know, yeah. li- different tables are limited to different amounts. Yeah. So once we'd sold out, that was it. But people were still asking and then saying, when is the next one? When is the next one? So that's amazing. we were that's... like, right, let's just book the second one, get it in the diary. So the Sunday, the 29th of November. Sunday, the 29th of November. Exclusive. You've heard it here. You know exactly how to get your tickets now from there as well. That's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to give you two exclusives. Go for it. Just because I love you. (laughs) (laughs) So we are doing our second Here Come the Girls show in November, but we are also doing a special, extra special Christmas show on the 21st of December. And there's going to be loads of surprises for that. Oh, that's brilliant. You have to find... Uh, Rebecca Bond Tenerife on Facebook and we've also set up a Facebook page for the show Here Come the Girls Show Tenerife oh that's uh, amazing where we'll post sneaky peeks and what a fantastic idea what a fantastic idea I mean there's one of the things that I've seen I, th- I think that's absolutely brilliant I've seen a lot of what's been going on down at Vivo and the, the lads down at Vivo have been brilliant I mean they, they, they looked after us when we were there and um, I had a ch- chance to have a chat with them as well and I think what they're doing is amazing mm-hmm. but I think the direction that they're going as well with also you know aiming at the kids because there's still a lot of kids on the island as well who um, you know need to be entertained. Because entertainment course. is an art, and you've got the Spice Girls have been int- the kids have been introduced to the Spice Girls and you know Gaga as well. And then if you're doing a show down a Christmas based as well, is, is it something that the kids will come along to as well? Of course, we have uh, 
kids come into our show as, as well. In fact, Artie's really excited because a lot of his friends are coming and he thinks it's really cool. My mom is Rebecca Bond and she sings and <laughs> she dances and they're all like, wow. And he said, yeah, she has a head mic. And they go, yay. And AKA they, he's Britney, like, Britney Spears. Do you even know what a head mic is? <laughs> it's a microphone that goes on your head. But yeah, he's really excited and a lot of his friends are coming and, oh, that's fantastic. and stuff. So yeah, it's it's, it's it sounds like it's gonna friendly. be it sounds like it's gonna be an amazing thing. I really it, I tell you I wish you all the best with it, Rebecca. Thank I think you. I think I think it's gonna be an absolutely fantastic night. I think I think the people that are gonna go on Saturday are gonna see a really good show because of, of the level course. that you've done in it. I think that's yeah, uh, I mean well it's the same with anything. When you invest, you know, time, money, like effort, you want it to be the best that it can be. And the costumes are incredible. My mum's done a lot of the the costumes, she's put hours and hours of time into it, as a lie. Yeah. We've put hours of time into the rehearsals. So, you know, everybody that's involved wants it to be the best that it can be. And so we're all working really hard to, to get it. And the, uh, how pleased are you with the outcome of it now? I'm really pleased. Yeah. I'm so, it, yeah. The two, you, the, two got... girl, the two girls that I've got, I couldn't be happier with, you know, I really you, the, struck gold with finding them too. I think what, hopefully it comes across on the camera as it does when I was talking to you, I think you're buzzing. I think you're absolutely yeah, buzzing for it. And I think that's one of the nicest things about it because if you what you said right at the beginning, if you enjoy it, then the audience will enjoy it. And I think that's really what's going to happen. So, I mean, again, once again, I wish you all the best for it. We've got a great rapport as well. The three of, the three myself and Kim and Ellie yeah. we get on with really good friends as well which I think shows on stage yeah, yeah, yeah. and like I say you know if you're enjoying what you're doing okay there's going to be a few nerves on Saturday night but yeah. hopefully once you know the lights come up and the first song's over and done with we are all just going to enjoy it and that's what it's all about brilliant when <laughs> you look at the future for Tenerife and the future for yourself as Rebecca Bond do you see yourself going back into the bars as being the, the the act for the night at the bar? Or do you see yourself now going, hang on a minute, the island's changed a little bit here? I mean, who knows what the new normal is because we've not... There's that word again. New normal, two words. We, we do it all the time. We don't know <laughs> no. what the new normal is. I would like to think that you know I can still go into the bars and hopefully the bars that I worked in before lockdown will have me back. You know, if they've not opened up yet, when they open, hopefully I can go back and perform for them. Yeah. Hopefully I'll be in new bars. But also, as I say, we've put so much work into this show. It really is an investment on everybody's part. And we want to hopefully get into the hotels and, you yeah. know, perhaps tour around the island with it. Um, I was um, I was, I was fortunate enough to talk to Paul down at Vivo and Joel. If you're watching, guys, hi, Joel. I know Joel watches. You're right. How are you doing? Um, and, you know, I was saying to them is that they've given a platform now for the entertainers to actually attack it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. um, I genuinely believe that, um, personally, if you go into a bar with a show that you do four times a week, you can't expect the fifth time of a week to charge for it. However, I think the artists, some of the artists on the island have gone, hang on a minute, we're doing something now completely different. So you've got maybe Rebecca Bond, the the mo the show that I know. Yeah. Yeah, and you've got that. And then now you've just, because of COVID, really, because of coronavirus, you've now created this, I, I'm, you've created this extravaganza because I've, I've seen a couple of little things. and so I've, I've seen a couple of things. <laughs> um, you created this extravaganza. When you drive uh, past it. Whatever I, I drove the past morning. the house and I got the shock of my life, trust me. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's all I'm saying, people. <laughs> But, but when you've created this extravaganza, you can then actually put that on the platform and go, yeah, you've got this. Uh, you know, um, it, it's all about the the, the part, the packages that you you know you, you're selling you, as yourself as as a person. You've got that show, but now you've got this extravaganza. Go, yeah, I can do this, and I've got a right to charge for this. Of course. And I think is that something? I mean, before pre coronavirus, you, you never even thought that was going. You never even looked at that on this island. I don't think. Or did you? Well, no. I mean, you just for me, it was so new. I hadn't been here very long, and I was just concentrating on getting stuck in and kind of trying to establish myself um I've always done what I've done I've always loved what I've loved and I do I you know like you said earlier when you stalked my page I sing <laughs> I dance I entertain and that's what I that's what I do yeah Vivo obviously I've I've opened up their venue 
which has been fantastic for so many performers. It really... It's been a lifeline. It has. It's genuinely been a lifeline. And, you know, it is an amazing venue. If you haven't been in, you know, you're in for a treat. It's Yeah. It, and it, you have to put something on that stage that's, like, relative to that. It's It's a big stage. They've got a full lighting system, you know, a massive sound system. The sound system's great. And, you know, you want to do something that shows that off as well yeah 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 as I've... much for them as, as for you and and like i say we've been rehearsing me and the girls for what four or five weeks solidly hard work you know yeah i mean in this heat as well and we're <laughs> dancing full out for hours a day yeah and people don't often see what goes into putting a show together you know they turn up on the night and they watch however long a two-hour show and you know it's it's two hours and they think oh wow that's you know amazing but forget about the blood sweat and tears that have gone into yeah, yeah, the yeah. lead up for that yeah. two hours um so yeah we've worked really hard me kim ellie as i say my mom was doing the costumes and and the guys down at vivo for the sound and lighting yeah as well. we teched um teched it yesterday actually with joel yeah and like i say it was a full day and yeah you know you have to take that into account so we are having to charge but I don't, I, it, there's, there's, uh, there's no reason to explain that. That's, yeah, that's the fact is, if you know, I mentioned before over there, if you're going to go out for a show and you're going to take, you know, you're going to go either take your partner or take some children to go and watch a show, you expect to pay for it. Of course, and, but it's, but it's it, still reasonably priced. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's not like you know you're paying hundred pounds to go and see. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with that. The ballet. Where do you see Where do you see Rebecca Bond then in five years' time? Well, hopefully, I'll still be in Tenerife. Mm-hmm. We hope so too. <laughs> We hope so too. You're a good friend of ours, I hope so, yeah. Yeah, I, think. I mean, I'm sure I will be. Yeah. Um, hopefully, I will still be earning a living and enjoying what I'm doing, mm -hmm. um, doing something that I love, because I consider myself one of the lucky people to do what I do for a job and enjoy my job and love my job. Yeah. So, as long as I'm still enjoying it and loving life... That's, uh, yeah. I think that's the right way. Before we, just to finish off, um, I know you've got a massive Blackpool following. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got any messages to your Blackpool fans that are still, because they still follow you. <laughs> they still follow you. I have a lot of Blackpool. There's I love, so, I love too Blackpool. many to name, but you know, a, a lot of my fans I saw or came from the Blackpool Promotions. So yeah. I'm going to give a shout out to them. And I did a live show for Blackpool Promotions. I remember lockdown, seeing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so everybody from Blackpool Promotions, uh, there's the Mark Kelly's groups, there's all the uh, you, working I, I men's think clubs, even though you're not the from there, bars, I I think, even though you're not from there, I think Blackpool's got a special place in your heart. Oh yeah, well I got I was a Pontins blue coat at Blackpool. Oh there you go, the, f the first job, so I kind of <laughs> went full circle. Okay, ah oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Listen, we're gonna I could talk to you all day, and we normally do anyway, but we're gonna have to leave it there because people are obviously finishing with the dog walking and stuff like that. Um, I just want to say, Rebecca, it's been a pleasure to get you, and I just wish you all the best for your show. I wish you all the best for. I've, 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 it's been it's, it's been a pleasure classing you as one of my friends actually for the last year. It's been brilliant to, to you know to meet you. Uh, you've got an amazing little boy in Artie. He's awesome. Uh, good luck with your show. Good luck with your future. And uh, you know, hopefully, watch this space and we'll uh, get yourselves booked in for the next show, people. Can I talk about you and the scooter incident now before we go? On? <laughs> or is that for another podcast? Wait, I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> no, you, you can crack on. You, Simon and Artie. Is this, my when, I, is this, when, I, is this when I nearly damaged your child? <laughs> <laughs> Just what you're trying to say. I don't know where I was, but I wasn't involved in this. But you and my brother went down to the top square with my Be seven-year-old seven son. Before we start it, I think if you just look over that side there, you might actually see this electric scooter in that corner there. <laughs> And it was purposely bought for my daughter. But before she arrived on the island, I thought I'd give it a go as well. Go on, you can carry on. <laughs> and obviously you'd had, you know, a, a couple to drink. I don't know what you're trying to say. And... <laughs> We don't drink and drive as ever, so no. obviously you had your scooter, and you said to Artie, "Come on, get on my scooter, and I'll take you home." And I think you ended up in a bush, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And she just the following days, mommy, I had a crash on a scooter with Rick. <laughs> I think that's what came down to it as well. But <laughs> he talked about it for weeks. But he's yeah. uh, he's forgiven me. Thank you. Thankfully, he's forgiven me enough, which is uh, which is really good. But uh, tell him I'll uh, tell him I'll thank you for that one as well when I see, <laughs> see him. Rebecca, thank you very much. Um, Thanks, watch the show, watch to see it, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Cheers, Pat. Thank you very much, my darling. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tienes que defender